What's the most fun you've ever had with 120 volts? I can safely say, as of this weekend, the most fun I've ever had with 120 volts is spot welding. It sort of got the better of me last week and I, uh, well, I made a sailboat. If you hang out in the same areas of the internet as I do, you'll probably have come across something like this before. This is the quintessential microwave oven transformer spot welder project. You basically start out with a microwave oven transformer like this. The idea behind a transformer is that when you put alternating current through the primary winding, it creates an alternating magnetic field, and that alternating magnetic field actually induces a current in the secondary winding. So when you get it out of the microwave, the secondary winding has many more wraps, and it's thinner wire, and it ends up creating a much higher voltage, and you need that higher voltage to power the microwave. For a spot welder, you want very low voltage, but you want very high current, so you basically cut out the secondary winding from the microwave, and then you add in your own secondary winding. In this case, I used a marine battery cable, and that's uh, it's four feet long, is I think two gauge wire. You know, pre-crimped, all cut to length. It's sort of perfect for this project. I just got it on Amazon. The idea behind a spot welder is you don't need a lot of voltage, but you really do need a lot of current. So the fact that I swapped this secondary coil around and put in this single wrap of much higher grade wire means I can draw, you know, I think it's hundreds of amps probably from this. So when you take that much current and you put it through two pieces of metal, uh, provided the metal isn't very electrically conductive, so steel, stainless steel, metals like that, it'll cause a huge temperature rise because of the internal resistance of the metal. So if you take a metal like copper or aluminum and you put this much current through it, it'll probably heat up a little bit, but it's such a good conductor, it's not gonna heat up enough to actually fuse the metal together. So for that reason, for a low power system like this, you can only really weld steel and stainless steel, which is totally fine by me. So I guess the first mechanical parts I had to make were the two electrodes. Uh, these are made out of one inch copper bar. The idea is that the bigger the pieces of copper are, the more current can pass through it without losing a whole bunch of electricity to heat. So these do actually get pretty hot, but I think I'm doing a lot better than if I had say three quarter inch copper. These are both mounted in these housings kind of. Uh, so you can see it's basically split on the two sides with a slitting saw and screwed back together, but I have a Delrin bushing in here. And so that Delrin bushing actually electrically insulates the electrode from the hinge, which means the whole thing doesn't short out as soon as I turn it on. So this sits together like this and it pivots to close. Now, a lot of industrial systems won't pivot, they'll actually slide in a linear fashion. The idea behind that is that it'll always contact in line regardless of how thick the material is. You can imagine with the pivoting ones here, um, it's just fine with thin material, but with thicker material, you'll get the back of this electrode contacting before the front. And uh, if you're welding studs in or something like that, they'll be out of square. I'm not too worried about that for this because these electrodes are fully adjustable. I just loosen these screws up and push them in and out. So yeah, not a big deal for me. Um, the other thing is a lot of industrial ones will have a pneumatic closer. And so that'll basically uh, squish the material together while it's being welded. That just ensures you have really good electrical contact and you get the spot weld where you want it. I do have plans to do um, sort of an over center spring on a handle here. So the idea is that when the handle is forward, it's going to spring it shut. But when the handle is backwards, it's going to spring it open. And I think that'll be sort of plenty for my needs. So those are the electrodes. I'm just going to put this steel pivot in here. There's actually a, there's a plastic bushing here, but that is just what I had. It could have been metal. All the electrical insulation happens at these bushings here. So that's basically the uh, the jaw system for now. This is where the electrodes screw on. This uh, <laughs> this whole spacing was a bit of a screw up. So certainly not going to scrap the part over that though, especially not one inch copper. All right, so I've got a pretty beefy housing that holds all this together. The reasoning for that is that the transformer is actually quite heavy. And also, because I don't really have a spot welder yet, I couldn't spot weld a sheet metal enclosure. So this will hopefully be one of the last enclosures I make out of this kind of, uh, it's almost like woodworking construction where you have butt joints with screws in it. But yeah, I mean, hopefully those days are behind me. So to start putting this monster together, this transformer is really heavy. It's got some holes there. Alright, 
So you can see the uh, transformer sitting in the housing here. I'm going to be careful on this surface because there's crushed rock everywhere. Scratch my paint. All right. So top of the housing, boom, is actually bent sheet metal. We just got a new box break at work, so I've kind of been enjoying bending sheet metal. Um, I also got a, an old stainless steel table that has like, I think it's 22 gauge stainless all around it. So I just chopped it up and now I have a, a solid supply of stainless steel. So the two variables you can control in spot welding are the duration of the weld and the power of the weld. I don't have any way of controlling power directly, but I can control duration. So I've got an Arduino all set up. I'll post the code for free on my Patreon. Anything I, any code that I write isn't worth any money, so that'll go up for free along with the schematic. I had planned on writing a program where you can just say what two metals you're welding together, and uh, it just does the duration automatically, but I think it's just going to be easier and probably more reliable in the long run for me to remember how long it takes to weld things. And if I can't remember, I'll just make a little chart and put it on the side. Um, this is the 5 volt power supply that controls the Arduino. If you ever open any kind of electronics and you see something like this in there, you should probably not plug it in. As it would happen though, this is a really cheap and reliable way of getting 5 volts out of mains power. So it's also insulated already, so I just left it together, but it has been causing a bit of a space constraint problem. All right, so let's keep putting this together. Put that in there. I'll um I'll make sure I include the part numbers for all this in the uh, my Patreon posting, but it's just an Arduino with a display shield. Alright, so that's the screen installed. These uh, little holes here actually just go through to buttons. The buttons are just kind of like manual overrides for if you want to... For whatever reason the encoder doesn't work, um, you can press these buttons and this will do sort of increase the, the duration by 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. And this is the fire button, but we have a foot pedal for that. Alright, um, on switch, just one of those standard toggle switch things. Here, there's a, that's a better view. Um, I sort of make a point to try to untangle everything when I put it in, just because that'll hopefully reduce the risk of me accidentally pulling a wire out somewhere. Okay. I hate using these little panel nut things. That's not supposed to screw on, it's just a tight fitting washer. Okay, I'm going to leave these fairly loose for now just so I can make sure I can line everything up. Maintain the tangle. Actually, let's do this one next. This is the rotary encoder. It's, uh, it's similar to a potentiometer, except it's a digital system, so it'll output pulses more or less as opposed to uh, a voltage. We'll get into that later when I start talking about the coding. This encoder actually also has a button built into it. So the way I've got it programmed now is if uh, if you just turn the encoder normally, it'll add, I think, 10 milliseconds maybe to uh, the duration. And if you hold the button down, it'll add 100. And that just lets you uh, sort of quickly change durations. Um, all right, now you. This has to go in sideways. Um, one thing you'll notice as I go through this is that I'm pretty pretty limited for space with that giant transformer. Um, and I wanted a fairly small desktop system, so I sort of packed everything in pretty tightly. All right, so that is all of that together for now. So now that that's put together, I can put the other side on this. All right, so I'm actually gonna turn the camera off now, um, just because this is gonna be a bit of a wrestling match to get all this together. The basic idea is that this relay goes in here like that. So just above the Arduino, this ridiculous power supply goes back in here underneath the big wires that are coming out the back. Uh, also my mains power is on these bullet connectors. So I'm gonna pass that in through the back 
and these big wires I've got to kind of sneak out this big slot in the back when I'm putting it together. So I'll see you guys when this is all put together. Alright guys, we're back. We've got everything put all together. Um, I think I might uh, I think I might replace that internal 5 volt supply with uh, an external and a barrel plug. It's, uh, it's all just pretty tight in there and it kind of sketches me out, so yeah. Um, this is uh, just flapping in the breeze for now. This is the uh, mains power. Uh, I guess you can't really see it. There we go. Yeah, so you can see it's just those are the leads there. Um, I'm going to get a strain relief and put that on and then that'll just pop in the back. Similarly, these guys are just kind of coming out through the, the sheet metal slot right now, but I'm going to put some kind of an o-ring around it. So for basic functionality, that's the screen. So when I turn the encoder, you see it increases or decreases the weld duration. Uh, and if I hold the button in and turn it, it uh, increments by 100, I think. So, oh, yeah, that's... Uh, told you I'm not great at coding. So now if I dry fire it there, it'll... Uh... The only thing that resets the screen is welding. So <laughs> it's probably not the safest thing. Maybe I should just have a screen reset button or maybe a better algorithm. But here we are. So I've got these really thin pieces of shim stock. Normally wouldn't even worry about welding these because they're so thin, I'll probably just burn through them. But if I set the duration to 40 milliseconds, I can just put them in the jaws here. Um, you can't see what I'm triggering it with, but this uh, this barrel connector actually goes to a foot pedal, so that's that. And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, welded pretty good. You can see when I force it apart and hopefully don't cut my hands off. Yeah, so you can see, well, maybe you can't, I don't know. Hopefully you can see. What you're looking for basically is a hole to get ripped in the metal rather than the weld to come apart. So that was plenty for those thin pieces. Now we can try some thicker pieces. This is actually the same thickness of steel that the enclosure is made out of. I think it might be, I don't know, uh, 22, 20 gauge stainless. So let's put that in there. I give it a little smack when I put it down just to make sure it breaks through any oxide. And I'm actually going to crank this to... Yeah, maybe two seconds. And hit the foot pedal. And uh, refused. So, yeah, if you want it to be extra strong, you can just put more welds on. So we're certainly reaching the practical limits of this welder with sort of this uh, thickness. Like, we're holding it together for very long, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably not going to do anything thicker than this, but I mean, that's almost a sixteenth of an inch, so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And of course, it can rock through a lot of easier stuff, um, sort of thinner gauge sheet metal and even um, welding studs on. So that's going to be helpful, I think. Um, you can also weld wire with it, like say a wire grate, but the only thing with that is the wire explodes sometimes. So what I got here are actually two extremely thin pieces of wire. Um, might make a custom set of jaws for doing this at, uh, with some grooves in them. So just make sure we're, uh, low enough here. I'm going to try 24 milliseconds. All right. Yeah, that, that seems to have done it. Um, if you go for too long on wire, especially it'll just blow up. So if I do... 40 milliseconds even. Yeah, it just cuts right through it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously the huge advantage of being able to adjust the duration like that. The other thing is you could probably adjust the power, although, like I said, I don't really have the capability for doing that right now. In terms of just sort of um, the kind of stuff I do, all small stuff, I mean, it works really well. So, I'm not, I'm not set up very well because my foot pedal's right under my camera, so it's... You can see um, when I hold the pedal down, it pulses at 200 milliseconds, and that is, that's called a debounce. So the reason I have a debounce on this is because if I'm welding something under 200 milliseconds and I can't get my foot off the pedal fast enough, it could uh, weld for longer than it's supposed to, so, um, or I could go full auto, I guess. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's my spot welder. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. 
I'm going to do a little bit more work on this. I may post a video, I may not. It'll probably go up on Instagram, but like I said, just the handle here. And then, um, yeah, you know, potentially putting in a barrel connector for the 5 volts so I don't have to cram all the high voltage stuff together. We'll see how that goes. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.